my god, is this worth it? Did we choose the right boat? We get a lot of these questions. But perhaps the answer is not if the path is right or wrong, but rather, what are we learning along the way? It's how the path shapes you, not how you shape the path. Because often you can cut corners, or take shortcuts, or maybe even give up and go a different direction. But you might miss the greatest lessons along the way, the defining moments that shape who you are. This is Luke, and I'm Lori, and we're back redesigning our steel sailboat from zero. And with all these lessons we're learning, maybe one day we can live our dream of sailing around the world. We started our big refit with rebuilding the hull. Then in the last episode, we rebuilt the upper deck and windows, we constructed the base of our davits, and then we completed the structure of the cockpit. And now we're jumping right in to building a whole new bowsprit, an anchor locker, and finally, our hard dodger. So let's get to it. The bow was a problematic part of the boat. The original anchor locker had rotted out the entire surrounding deck, so it was necessary to reconstruct it. Also, the bow roller was just a small piece of stainless steel with an old manual winch. So we took the opportunity to reimagine this entire area. The bow sprit was one of our most ambitious projects. We wanted to create a piece that would have support for the anchor, a place for the anchor liner reserve anchor, a connector for the Genoa, and also spinnaker, so it really had to work hard. We also want to pass the anchor chain below the deck so it avoids scratching and dirtying the main deck. It was a tall order, but we had a plan. We started by cutting off a large tip of the bow to create the pass through to the anchor locker. We then created an actual size cardboard mock-up of the design that we wanted and we tried it out on the bow of the boat. When we were ready, we traced the pieces onto 8mm steel sheets. The biggest challenge about cutting the bow sprit was that we did not have a CNC machine to perfectly cut out the steel plates. With all the modifications we were doing on the boat, we needed to find creative ways to execute our vision at lower costs. So we had to cut each piece out by hand using a blowtorch. Our welder happened to specialize in working with blowtorches and it did an incredible job with a steady hand. The pieces were later assembled at the workshop and spot welded. This was the moment that the bowsprit took shape. A drill press was used to cut out all of the holes for connecting the Genoa and also the plastic rollers for the main and reserve anchor. When it was almost complete, we moved it to the bow to fit it into place and then finished welding it all together. It took a lot of finessing to get it just right and level. But when it was in place, it made a huge statement. To eliminate all the crude edges and give it a more machine look, we took the time to sand it smooth with an angle grinder and fix any imperfections. Since the slope of the hull was hard to predict, we applied the finishing once the bow spirit was in place, extending the sides to follow the flow of the boat and have a continuous appearance. And then we kept it rolling, closing off the front of the bow and diving into the chain locker. 
We removed the original locker and built our new one all the way forward, gaining about 30 centimeters in the forward berth. Also, there was no barrier protection in case of a collision, just a short hollow pole. So we decided to make the chain locker double as a locker and also a way to reinforce the bow. To do this, we made the back of the locker with an 8mm plate of steel to form the strong barrier. The sides of the chain locker with form was 6mm plates, maximizing as much space as possible. We spot welded the box together and added temporary handles so we could remove it and weld the back side before installing it. The hard to reach surfaces behind the locker and also on the back sides were treated and sealed. We pushed it hard, trying to get the most out of every single day, and it was paying off. We installed the locker and drain pipe, and it was looking really good. Then, we started to lay on the main deck on top. We had carefully cut out the hatch door from the deck plate, and it fit like a glove. Since we were exposed to the elements, we made sure that we always sanded applied rust converter and sealed the steel to prevent rust from getting out of control. If you like this video and want us to keep making more, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and let us know in the comments what you think about Bounce Sprit and Chain Locker. Would you do anything differently? After we completed the final part of the cabin and upper deck, we were feeling really motivated to start work on the hard dodger. We began by creating a frame that arced over the companionway hatch, knowing the maximum height would be around 15 centimeters below the boom, so we built from there. We mapped out our pieces on cardboard, and instead of using the original 4 millimeter plates of steel, we used 3 millimeter on the main cabin and the dodger to lower the weight of the top side of the boat. We wanted something that was durable and would last a long time because we didn't want to have to worry about changing a fabric dodger every so often. Once the sides were complete, we traced the upper plate so we could guarantee it would fit. We cut it out and then we placed it on top. This resulted in something that looked a little more like something out of Star Wars than a sailboat, but we knew we were going in the right direction. We'd like to take a moment now to give a huge thanks to our Lahakai crew on Patreon. You make these videos possible and we appreciate your support. If you would also like to be part of the crew, check out our link to our Patreon page in the description below. With the dodger taking shape and all the pieces in place, we started welding on the inside. Now the look of the forward cabin and the dodger mimicked each other, creating a continuity in the design. With the MIG welder moved into the cockpit, we were able to finish welding the dodger together in about a day. And once it was all done, we used tape to mark out the location of the windows and then carefully cut them out with an angle grinder one by one. And of course, one of the most important steps to finalize our work was applying rust converter and a protective sealant to the steel to stop rust before it starts. The 
details are always what makes a job good. These grab handles that we placed around the Dodger for safely moving forward on the main deck or forward in the cockpit really brought it all together. So let's check it out, the before and after, and let us know what you think about the results in the comments.